So, you know, last night, last night you are, or we, we, we talked about like the college football playoff and, and, and things like that. But, but there's a couple, there's a couple games that, that were played this weekend that have led to, that have led to some decisions. And I asked a friend of mine this weekend, I, 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 Dan Mullen's in trouble. I know you're a big Dan Mullen guy, and I like Coach Mullen a lot too, personally, and I think he's a really good football coach, but he has not done a good job at Florida events. Which is surprising because it felt yeah. like he was doing a great job to begin uh, with. Yeah. And it's all gone yeah. south on him. Somebody somebody had a thing. I want to find that tweet. There was a tweet about how Florida was like really rolling. And um when they lost to LSU last year. They have just never recovered from that. Remember, that was the shoe throwing incident. You know, oh, when they had yeah. the game one. Shoe. And that, you know what, threw the shoe. Like, yes. I okay, remember. here it is. This is from Joel Klatt. Okay. So, in the 13 games before that incident against LSU, Florida was 12 and one in the 13 games prior. Okay. So, I'm looking at it now. They, at that point in time in the season, they had one loss. They were eight and one, and their only loss was a three point road loss at Ole Miss. They pounded Georgia. They had won games 41 17, 44 28, 63 35, 38 17, 34 10, 31 19. After that, they lost to they lost LSU. They lost Alabama. They got killed by Oklahoma. And this year, they've beaten Florida Atlantic, South Florida, Tennessee, and Vanderbilt. And they've lost Alabama, Kentucky, LSU again, Georgia, and they lost this weekend to South Carolina, forty to seventeen. Yes, it was not, close. and it wasn't that close. Florida scored last. Yeah, and you just wonder, like sometimes that that moment can be defined where it's like that's a program altering thing, and how you handle it is 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 when a coach like him fires his offensive line coach, John Hevesy. Now, let, let me remind you, John Hevesy and Dan Mullen were on the same staff at Bowling Green, the sta same staff at Utah, and the same original staff at Florida. These guys have known each other a long time. He also fired Todd Grantham, which is something he should have done two years ago. Hmm. But when you make those kind of moves with multiple games left in the season, you're doing that to preemptively protect your job. Oh, absolutely. No question. Yeah, and so uh, he's they, in, he, he's they, in they trouble. Heat. Yeah, no the yeah. the the seat is hot down yes. there in Gainesville. There is no because that's not acceptable. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not acceptable as a Florida head coach. It's not, and yep. they're, they're they're losing games that they shouldn't lose, and they're losing them in a manner that they shouldn't mm -hmm. lose. There's too much talent down there mm -hmm. for them to be losing like that. I mean, and, and like I said, and you you brought up the stat. He started out great down there. Like it was going to oh, be yeah. a quick turnaround. I mean. All of it, and he has just lost the reins uh, yeah. down there in Florida. It and he puzzling. he's making decisions that are really puzzling. And you know, part of it was the decision to play Anthony Richardson as the only quarterback against Georgia. And Anthony Richardson is a kid that's a really powerful runner, but he's not much of a passer right now. And and to have him start his first game. You know, like the kid, the kid went three and eight against Florida Atlantic, three of three against South Florida, one of one against Kentucky, four of six against Vanderbilt, 10 of 19 against LSU. First time he threw more than 10 passes in the game, he threw two picks yeah. against, against LSU in a loss. And then you start him against Georgia. You start a one dimensional quarterback, and the one dimension is running against Georgia. Like, that's one of the worst coaching decisions I've ever seen. And I just didn't expect it from Dan Mullen, someone who I have a tremendous amount right. of respect for. And and that's the side. And then when you watch him on the sideline, he's making panicky moves. And that, again, that surprises me for a guy like Dan Mullen, who's always been yeah. a super self confident guy. So th that's a, that was a really troubling thing for me, in my opinion. Yeah. No yeah. question. I completely agree. That's going to be a. Look, that's going to be a pretty prime job that's going to be open, I think. Um, it's I think he's going to save it. The only way he loses his job, in my opinion, you tell me if you agree or disagree with this, Vince. Okay. They've got Sam – so they're four and five right now. Right. Okay. 
they're coming off a year in which they've they played for the SEC championship, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, a matter of, yes. And so they played for the SEC championship, uh, I think twice under Mullen now, or no, that was the first time. Yeah, last year was the first time. And so you can chalk it up eight and four. You lost to Bama, you lost to Oklahoma. Okay. It's, there's, there's greater tragedies in the world than to lose to those two teams. That's fair. And then you lost to a pretty good AM team on the road. Okay. Well, well, chalk it up. You still were SEC East champs. Beat Georgia. The fact that they're four and five now, they've got Sam Ferd coming up this weekend. That's a, that's win. a win. It's a win. They could play the same way they did against South Carolina right. and still beat Sam Ferd. Sure. Then they're so at and Missouri five. and home against Florida State. They've got to run the table. They have to. If he loses another game, even if they finish six and six, is Florida State at home. You said it's at home. If they lose to Florida State, that's the game, it's game that could, over. That, that's game the over. one that could get him in trouble. Yep, a that's, bad that's, Florida State team. That's where I'm at. If he wins yeah. that game, he saves his job for another year. If he loses that game, it's game over. He could done. could be. Yeah, that that's how I feel. I just the the question I would have is I don't know if the, there's two ways to look at it. Uh, and this is about his job and some other jobs that people have talked about. May they fire this guy or that guy? And I said, I don't, I don't know if this is necessarily the season you want to be looking for a coach. Cause there's two schools of thought. One is like, do you really want to be battling LSU and USC for a job? And then potentially depending on who those teams hire Penn state, you, you know what I mean? Sure. The other option is some really good coaches are going to get gobbled up this off season. And if you want one of them and that guy's a commodity, you may need to make the move. Because you may say, hey, like, uh, we really like, I don't know, let's just throw the, the hot name out there, Mel Tucker or James Franklin, right? One of those two guys. If you, if that's a guy you've like kind of always had your eye on in case things don't go well, well, if you don't make that move now, that guy's going to be gone. You're not going to get him. So, it, again, I don't think that's always the best reason to make a hire, but we've seen people make worse decisions when it comes <laughs> to <laughs> we've, we've seen people reasons. fire coaches for worse decisions yeah. than that. Yeah, exactly. The other option is, is like, you know, I mean, just, hey, look, let's give him a chance, you, you know, find out from him what the plan is to turn it around like Jack Swarbrick did with Brian Kelly. What's your plan? You know, uh, so, yeah, it, um, it, it it's very interesting. We got a super chat here real quick from Richard Malt. Yeah, hit it. Golden Tate 2.0 is in the backfield. Remember, he came out of high school as an RB. I am absolutely jacked to see this offense on Saturday. He's talking about Tyron Williams. Obviously. I'm glad you're happy to see it because I'm yeah. nervous. Well, I mean, you know what? I'm 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 going to be with Richard. I'm going to be cautiously optimistic until they prove me wrong. I'm I just want to be I just want to be in a good mood. It's been a good weekend, great weekend. I'm in a good mood today. <laughs> oh, I'm in a great uh, mood. Yeah, I, I'm that... I'm gonna I'm gonna say that I'm gonna give him a, you know, I'm gonna give him the the That's thing. That's fair. And, and Kenny Moore says LSU is going after Jimbo Hard. I don't think there's any chance in heck that. A and M's a better job. Absolutely. I'm sorry, Texas A and M is a better job than LSU in every way imaginable, in my opinion. Uh, especially, uh, you know, especially with all the struggles that Texas is going through, I think A and M's a pretty good job. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think LSU is an overrated job. I do. It's a weird fan base. It's a it's a it's a group of boosters. Like the minute you start having problems, it's like it just becomes so toxic that it's like it's impossible to do what you need to do to fix it. Right. And and so that that's like that's where I'm hoping the Florida State boosters just shut your mouths and do whatever Mike Norvell needs you to do for one more year. Give them one more year to start shut because what happens is if you start running your mouths about we like this guy, that guy, this guy better turn it around. All of a sudden, it becomes harder to recruit, it becomes harder to hire coaches, it becomes harder to do it because yeah, I won't go to that school. You know they're about to right. they're about to get fired. That's what made Mike Elko and Chip Long and Clark Lee's decision to come to Notre Dame so important. Because they could have been like, uh, I don't know about that. That's not a great right. roster. They are four and eight. That guy's on a hot seat. I don't know if I want to put my career in, in, in. But they still made the decision, and and I thought that was I thought that was huge. So that was uh, that was a big one. We got down here. Rob it off. I'm not certain yet, but right now my USD upset special double for this coming Saturday is Baylor over Oklahoma and Washington over Oregon. Holy moly! That would that would be like that would. To me, that would actually be bigger shockwaves than what we saw this weekend. Because I think a lot of people, I, I couldn't, I tried to do like the whole reverse psychology thing. I just couldn't bring myself to, you know, because especially as I picked freaking Florida to beat Georgia the week before, I was like, I'm just going to go with the, the higher ranked teams. Right. But man, that, that to me, I think Baylor beating Oklahoma would be a bigger shock than either Michigan State or, or uh, Wake Forest losing this weekend. 
And then Washington State beating Oregon would be just as just as big to me, Vince. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. No, I would I would love every second of both of those. Um, I don't know. I had more confidence in the two ups up, upsets uh, mm-hmm. this past weekend than I do in both of those. But um, Baylor, hey, look, Baylor's coming off a loss. They're smarting, so mm-hmm. you know they, they got nothing to lose. Why not? Could go be after dangerous. Them, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then Oregon's at home against Washington State. That that would surprise me a little bit. But it is in Waco. The Oklahoma Baylor game is in Waco. So yeah, that yeah. but that would be I would love that. Now this weekend is a little bit different. My number one priority for this weekend is is Notre Dame because this is the last game. This is to the last me. hurdle. If Brennan Armstrong plays and Virginia's saying that he will, I, I we'll see. I mean, he should say that now. I mean, he should tell sure. Notre, make Notre Dame think they got to prepare for Brandon Armstrong and then you can Absolutely. make your decision later. Uh, like your real decision later, but I'd make, I'd make Notre Dame. I would not let Notre Dame go into this game knowing that Brandon Armstrong's not, playing, even if he's not going to, but you know, Notre Dame, you got to win this game. The offense has to be on point, all that kind of stuff. I think they'll win, but you know, this is a dangerous team. You win sure. this game, you're going to be 11 and one. Now we've talked about the, the, the trap game being Georgia tech, Meaning, if you're not focused, they could hurt you. Notre Dame's going to be ready for Virginia. It, you know, now whether they execute or not, different story. But this is a six and three team that scores a ton of points. If they think he's going to play, they're going to have to be ready for it. So that's uh that's mine for this weekend, Vince. But we'll we'll get into more of that tomorrow after the 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 college football playoff show, and that's going to be part of a two show special that's for right. tomorrow. We're going to have twelve thirty tomorrow. We're going to have our, our stacking up of the Notre Dame offense against the Virginia defense. We will then tomorrow night after – we'll let you know, like, obviously, it, hey, look, here's why you need to be a subscriber and here's why you have to hit the notification bell. Because when we find out what time the committee is going to meet and then what time our show is, we set the show and then you get notified that we're going to go live at X at specific time. Right. Okay? So that's why you need to hit the subscribe and hit the notification bell. And, of course, smash the like button. We would appreciate that. So we'll do that tomorrow night. Wednesday, we'll be back to normal time. Thursday, normal time. Friday, normal time. So it's going to be a fun week, Vince. And I'm going to enjoy watching film of Virginia this week. I really like their offense. I love how they spread the ball around. It's a really fun offense to watch. I look forward to talking about that on Wednesday, the matchup of that offense against the New defense on uh, Wednesday. So that is it for today's show. Vince, thanks for being with us. I'm glad y'all yes, liked sir. the new intro music. I was really fired up about, about that. And I was not going to lie. I normally don't care what people think, but I care what y'all think. And I wanted to know <laughs> what y'all think, thought about it. So I was glad to see the, the oh, excitement great. about it. So uh, everybody have an awesome rest of your day. Check out irishbreakdown.com. Sign up for the message board. You can see the, the, the post below. I've got the... Um, I'm just going to publish it in there again. I got the link to the join thing in there. So come join us. We got some great conversation going on. And the nice thing about being on the message board is when we end here, if you've got more questions or I didn't get to a question, or you want to talk more, we can do that. Just bring it to the board, baby. So anyway, everybody have a great, awesome rest of your day. For Vince, I'm Brian. We'll talk to you very, very soon. <laughs>